And you can stitch all sorts of mathematical theorems onto these surfaces. The discovery of hyperbolic space ushered in the field of mathematics that's called non-Euclidean geometry. And this is actually the field of mathematics that underlies general relativity and is actually ultimately going to show us about the shape of the universe. So there is this direct line between feminine handicraft, Euclid, and general relativity. Now, I said that mathematicians thought this was impossible. Here is two creatures who'd never heard of Euclid's parallel postulate, didn't know it was impossible to violate, and they're simply getting on with it. They've been doing it for hundreds of millions of years. And I once asked the mathematicians why it was that mathematicians thought this structure was impossible when sea slugs had been doing it since the Silurian age. And their answer was interesting. They said, well, I guess there aren't that many mathematicians sitting around looking at sea slugs. And that's true. But it also goes deeper than that. It also says a whole lot of things about what mathematicians thought mathematics was, what they thought it could not couldn't do, what they thought it could not couldn't represent. And even mathematicians who, in some sense, are the freest of all thinkers, literally couldn't see not only the sea slugs around them, but the lettuce on their plate. Because lettuces and all those crilly vegetables, they also are embodiments of hyperbolic geometry. And so, in some sense, they literally, we, they had such a symbolic view of mathematics, they couldn't actually see what was going on on the lettuce in front of them. It turns out that the natural world is full of hyperbolic wonders. And so, too, we've discovered that there is an infinite taxonomy of crochet hyperbolic creatures. We started out, Chrissy and I and our contributors, doing the simple mathematically perfect models. But we found that when we deviated from the specific setness of the mathematical code that underlies this, the simple algorithm crochet 3 increase 1, when we deviated from that and made embellishments to the code, the models immediately started to look more natural. And all of our contributors, who are an amazing collection of people around the world, do their own embellishments. And as it were, we have this ever-evolving crochet taxonomic tree of life. And just as the morphology and the complexity of life on Earth is never-ending, little embellishments and complexifications in the DNA code lead to new things like giraffes or orchids. So too, little embellishments in the crochet code lead to new and wondrous creatures in the evolutionary tree of crochet life. So this project really has taken on this inner organic life of its own that's the totality of all the people who've come to it and their individual visions and their engagement with this mathematical mode. We have these technologies, we use them, but why? What's at stake here? What does it matter? For Chrissy and I, one of the things that's important here is that these things suggest the importance and value of embodied knowledge. We live in a society that completely tends to valorise symbolic forms of representation, algebraic representations, equations, codes. We live in a society that's, that's obsessed with presenting information in this way, teaching information in this way. But through this sort of modality, crochet, other plastic forms of play, people can be engaged with the most abstract, high-powered theoretical ideas, the kind of ideas that normally you have to go to university departments to study in higher mathematics, which is where I first learned about hyperbolic space. But you can do it through playing with material objects. And one of the ways that we've come to think about this is that what we're trying to do with the Institute for Figuring and projects like this, we're trying to have kindergarten for grown-ups. And kindergarten was actually a very formalised system of education established by a man named Friedrich Froebel, who was a crystallographer in the 19th century. He believed that the crystal was the model for all kinds of representation. And he developed a radical alternative system of engaging the smallest children with the most abstract ideas through physical forms of play. And he is worthy of an entire talk on his own right. The value of education is something that Froebel championed through plastic modes of play. We live in a society now where we have lots of think tanks, where great minds go to think about the world and they write these great symbolic treatises called books and papers and op-ed articles. We want to propose, Chrissy and I, through the Institute of Figuring, another alternative way of doing things, which is the play tank. And the play tank, like the think tank, is a place where people can go and engage with great ideas. But what we want to propose 
is that the highest levels of abstraction, things like mathematics, computing, logic, etc., all of this can be engaged with, not just through purely cerebral, algebraic, symbolic method methods, but by literally, physically playing with ideas. Thank you very much.